So thank you, Logan. Thank you, Logan. And Friedman. I'm Ken Crawford. Sliding with a med in my hand. I'm Whatever. So I'm going to talk about the economy. And we're going to start with uh, the U.S. and we're going to talk about inflation. So when we look at inflation today, we're running at about 1.7%, which from an historic basis is low. So that's point number one. Point number two is where the Fed would like our inflation rate to be, which is 2%. And what you can see from this chart from 2000 to today is much more often than not, we are below the Fed's target. So the Fed has a little bit of an issue with our inflation, but it's not just the United States with low inflation. So if we look across the world, UK down, India down, South Korea down, China down, Australia down. So suffice it to say that inflation rates are falling and are relatively low across the globe. What else is relatively low? Interest rates. So this is a chart of the 10-year Treasury bond, U.S. government, and today our yield is at or around 2.1%. So 2.1% interest rate on a 10-year Treasury bond. Uh, notably, if you go back as recently as seven months ago, in November of 2018, the interest rate was 3.2%. So in a little over a half a year, the interest rate on our 10-year Treasury bond has dropped by over one-third. Substantial decline. How many of you get enthused at the thought of getting 2.1% interest on your 10-year bonds? I can't count that many hands. So let's go around the globe and see where else we could invest. If we went to Italy and bought a 10-year government bond, today we would get 2.7%. Again, the United States at 2.1%. If we went a little bit north to Canada, 1.5%. If we went across the pond to the UK, 0.9%. If we went to France, they would give us 0% for a 10-year government bond. If we went to Japan, we would be guaranteed to lose 0.1%. And if we went to Germany, we would lose 0.2%. So what you can see is interest rates across the globe, and especially developed countries, are very low. And that's one of the reasons why our interest rate is low because the U.S. is competing with other governments for money. So a good chunk of the world's economy is guaranteeing you either 0% or that you will lose money when you buy their bonds. What else are we seeing that is relatively low in the world today? Unemployment. It's one small step for man. One drop in unemployment. The last time we were at this level, 3.6%, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin were walking on the moon, 1969, 50 years ago. So the employment picture in the United States is strong. And because the employment picture in the U.S. is strong, and our economy is at least okay, up until recently, the Federal Reserve has been raising short-term interest rates. And that's created another issue that we're going to talk about. And Steve mentioned it. So how many of you have heard of inverted yield curves or inversion? How many of you understand what it means? Uh, then, then you're ahead of me. So we're going to look at the 10-year Treasury bond like we did before, and we're going to compare that to the three-month Treasury bill. What you can see is, as the Fed raised rates, the three-month bill is going up and up and up. So to do this, to explain it, we're going to have a hypothetical exercise. And we all are a bank. And we're not just a bank. We're a bank that's a time machine. So I'm going to go back to 2015. And into our bank walks John Mira. John Mira says, Can I get a loan? What's a loan? 
we say, sure, we'll give you a loan, and the rate for that loan today is about 2.5%. So we're gonna charge John Mira 2.5% for that loan. In order to fund that loan, we need deposits. And in 2015, we're paying pretty much zero. So we charge John Mira 2.5, it costs us zero, our profit is 2.5%. We're pretty happy. Then our time machine jumps to 2017, and into our bank walks Steve Finnerty. And Steve Finnerty says, Can I get a loan? <laughs> now, before you guys worry, remember I said this was a hypothetical. <laughs> In the real world, we would never give Steve Finnerty a loan. <laughs> but just for an example, 2017, the rate that we're going to charge Steve is 2.5%. And what we have to pay for our deposits is 1%. So 2 and a half Steve's loan, our cost of one, simple math is we make one and a half percent. We're happy. Fast forward to today. Into our bank walks Logan Finnerty, and Logan says, Ken, can I have a loan? So we say, huh, oh, let's see what we can do for you, Logan. Today, as we mentioned, 10-year bond, 2.1 percent. That is the rate at which we would charge Logan. Our costs, however, are 2.2 percent. So if we made a loan to Logan, we would lose 0.1 percent. And even though we are a benevolent bank, we are a for-profit institution. We don't want to make that loan. We don't want to make it to Logan. We don't want to make it to anyone. And every other bank doesn't want to make that loan. So in this situation, over time, the economy grinds to a halt. And that's one of the reasons why, I'm sure you've heard, there is so much pressure on the Fed to lower short-term rates. So we as bankers can charge Logan 2.1%, but pay our depositors less. And that's why people worry about inversion. So what else are they talking about? A year ago, we talked to you about tariffs, and we were hoping it was one and done, but it isn't. Tariffs are back on page one headlines. And why are people talking so much about tariffs? Well, if we look today, our inflation rate, as we mentioned, 1.7%. Given the new tariffs that have been recently implemented, Goldman Sachs estimates that an inflation rate will increase to 1.9%. Were the Trump administration to apply the $300 billion of incremental tariffs that it's talking about, Goldman estimates that our inflation rate would rise to 2.4%. And if the Trump administration slapped on tariffs to the auto firms outside the United States, inflation would be at 2.7%. And, and remember, tariffs is just a fancy name for taxes. And what it does is take imported goods and increase the cost to us consumers, and eventually that pain is borne by us. And you can see, a material increase in our inflation rate were all of these tariffs to be put in place. What about, Steve mentioned, gross domestic product, all the goods and services that the U.S. produces. What could tariffs do to that? Today we are running at 2.7 percent GDP growth. This is real, so <laughs> stripped out from inflation. A uh, pretty good rate. Again, the recently implemented tariffs, expectations are that it will decrease our growth to 2.5%. That incremental $300 billion I talked about drops it to 2.4%. And if we hit autos, 2.3%. So again, a material impact to our economy. So economists and most investors and we certainly understand that we need fair trade and free trade the issue, though, is how you go about that. And I would say the vast majority of economists and most investors would prefer we not use tariffs as the cudgel in order to get to fair trade in the United States and abroad. So when you talk to an economist, did you say terrified or terrified? And with that, I'll turn it over to John to talk about stocks. 